if you're running your classes properly, if you're running your drills properly, if you're running your sparring properly, they don't need individual pad work with you 10 times a fucking week. They just don't. It's a luxury. And it's a placebo. Okay? Majority of my fighters, when we first came up, I didn't have time to even pad. We had a full-time job. I just came to class. That's all they do. My first three years with Gaston, he never did pad work. Mo, I've never done one pad session with Muhammad. Ever. Coach. And I get that multiple times a day, every day. I say, good, come to the classes. I need you to be here three to four days a week. I need to see you in sparring at least twice a week. When I feel you're ready, I'll find you a smoke. All right? Once they are sparring and they are not losing every single round, they are comfortable getting hit and they are moving well with combinations, I will find them a smoker. Or an exhibition, or a PKB tournament, or something along those lines. That process is different for everyone. It could literally be a 30 day process for one person and it could be a year long process for someone else, okay? There are fighters that I protect from themselves. There are fighters that I protect from tougher fights. And that's just the truth of the matter, right? So yeah, I want athletes who can fight anybody, right? Right out of the gate, Gaston's first pro fight. His, his, his pro qualifier was supposed to be against Chris Williams, two weight classes heavier. Chris had 40 fights at the time. Uh, uh, that's no problem. Chris missed weight by 12 pounds. It didn't happen. Then he fought Brian, who was 6'2". Uh, that already had a pro fight. Then he fought Tyler Toner, who was a UFC veteran. Uh, you know, then he fought Caleb, who had nine pro fights. Then he fought Ben, who had 40 plus pro fights. Then he fought Crompet, who had 200 plus fights. So Gaston is somebody who I've never protected, but I protected him in his MMA debut for himself, making his MMA debut with a torn MCL, right? I put him in with another pro debuter. What should I have done? Taken a stand-up Muay Thai guy with a bad knee and had him fight a wrestling killer? Is that looking out for my fighter? No. Now his next fight, he'll fight somebody with two or three pro fights and a winning record. And then after that, they're gonna to wanna to put him on TV and he's gonna to have to take whatever fight they give him. And that's how it goes. If you're going to be an amateur fighter, I need to see you four to five days a week. I need to see you sparring twice a week. And I need to see you in X amount of classes. Right. Do you have minimum hours per day? Minimum hours per day? No. No. It's so minimum sessions per week. Okay. And by session, you mean just one hour session? Depends on the block. Conditioning, boxing, grappling, wrestling, road work sparring, pad work, works out, right? You're looking at 10 to 14 sessions a week. <clears throat> so, you want to fight? You show me you want to fight. You stay consistent, right? We start to get you fights. How do you perform in those fights will dictate how long you stay at that level, right? You will stay at the smoker level as long as you need to stay at the smoker level, right? When I feel that you can be competitive enough to win a fight, then you can go amateur. Three to four days a week, they're gonna run three to four days a week. They're gonna spar two to three days a week at appropriate contact levels. They're going to box two days a week at a minimum. They're going to train Muay Thai three to four days a week at a minimum. Right? If they're focused on Muay Thai, four to five days a week at a minimum. If they're an MMA athlete, they're gonna box twice a week. They're gonna do Muay Thai three days a week. They're gonna wrestle at least twice a week. And they're gonna grapple at least three days a week. Conditioning, three days a week. Running, three to four days a week. Pad work, twice a week. There's your answer. But I was fighting at a time when it wasn't highly televised and it was before MMA. <coughs> Who am I to coach anybody? 
more than you, or you, or you, or you, or anybody. Right? If I can do it, you can do it. Right? If I can coach people, I don't care who they are. I don't care what level. Somebody comes to you and they're a world champion in blah, 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 you can coach them. You can coach them and you can make them better. If you doubt it, then you won't, right? <clears throat> but just believe that you can, and you can, right? Believe in what you do, right? Believe in what you do. The day that I helped Miriam win that belt is the day <coughs> that I believed in myself as a coach, from that point on. And that was there before any of the other ones. There are enough people that have come to this thing that have now built their own gyms, built their own brand, built their own champions, world champions, that I'm comfortable in saying, yeah, it works. So keep on trucking, people. I'm proud of all of you. Thank you. Right? And there are some of you that are just phenomenal, phenomenal coaches. Phenomenal coaches. And I admire each and every one of you. There are some of you that I follow, and I just go, wow, I wish I could do that as well as they do. Absolutely.